With short-time work programs, governments allow firms experiencing temporary demand or productivity shocks to reduce hours worked, while providing income support to their employees for the hours not worked. Such policies can help preserve employment levels during times of crisis, but if used for too long, they may impair efficient reallocation in the labor market in the long run. In a study with Camille Ondé uh, at the London School of Economics, we analyzed the employment, productivity, and welfare effects of the Italian short-term work program during the Great Recession, comparing firms that could and could not access the program during the crisis. Even though during the recession, employment levels decreased across the board, companies that use short-term work ended up having, on average, a 45% higher level of employment than the rest. This effect derives from their ability to retain a greater number of workers by reducing hours worked and thus the overall wage bill cost. Importantly, workers were compensated by the government for the income lost due to hours not worked. We observed that the take-up of the short-time work program was particularly high among firms with lower levels of liquidity and higher risk of large reductions in their labor force which are precisely the primary target of the policy. Overall, the policy is estimated to have increased the probability of survival of firms by approximately 10%. To put it straight, short-term work works. It helps saving employment and offers a substantial degree of short-term insurance against the cost of hours reductions and job loss. Our analysis also shows that in the context of the Great Recession in Italy, the positive effects on employment dissipate once the program lapses, as well as the degree of insurance that the program offers to workers. This is due to the fact that many chronically low productivity firms took up the program, even though they had limited prospects of growth once the program ended. One may worry that by subsidizing work in low productivity firms, short-time work may prevent workers to move to high productivity ones. In this way, the policy may have significant negative reallocation effects in the labor market. Our results show that despite short-term work having targeted predominantly low productivity firms, reallocation effects were in fact small, reducing the overall economy's productivity growth by 2% during the crisis. We conclude that short-term work is effective at preventing large and inefficient surges in unemployment during crisis, but it is also a tool that is best employed in the face of temporary rather than permanent shocks. With shocks of long duration, short-term work can hinder the movement of workers to other firms and therefore limit economic growth.